Okay, let's begin with a little bit of an introduction to Masechus Kitten. The art scholar does a fairly good job of organizing it. <clears throat> Probably the first place to begin Kedushin, it, begin Gitten is actually with the Mishnah and Kedushin, right? How do you create a marriage? A person is able to acquire a woman as a wife in three ways, and she acquires herself in two ways. So how does a person acquire a wife? Either There are three ways to effectuate a Kedushan, which is either through Kesef, monetary value, that's what we do today, a ring, <clears throat> or it's through a shtar, a document that states Kedushan, even though the document itself is worthless, or Bia, if they have a, an intimate relationship with the intention that through that relationship they will become married, then that is another way of affecting Kedushan. How does a woman acquire herself to go ahead and what does Kedushin mean? So we said the marriage is really a two-stage process, it's Kedushin and Isuin. Kedushin means that they are sanctified to each other. The woman is no longer allowed to marry whoever, whoever she pleases. And Isuin is the consummation, the living as her husband and wife of that relationship. And a, a woman is kind of as answer they drop them. She acquires herself in two ways. One of them is by is by receiving a divorce, and the other one is with the death of the husband. It's a famous story. I think it's Rabbi Kiva Eger, it was a sage about three hundred years ago, two hundred you know, less than two hundred fifty years ago. He uh, there was a man who didn't want to give his wife a divorce, so he called the man into his office and says, "He says I'm just telling you. He says a woman acquires herself in two ways: either either beget or bemisa sabal." If you don't give a get, you're going to die. The guy says, I don't care. He walked out of the house and he died. <laughs> anyway, okay. Anyway, so that is the two ways a woman, a woman, a woman leaves a marriage. And obviously, this Masech, the Masech of Kitten, deals with, deals with divorce. That's, the, that's the one of two ways where how a woman can acquire herself. Okay, now, the word get literally means a document. And... While it specifically refers to the document called a divorce, there are, sometimes the word get is used with regard to any document. You'll find a, you know, a, a, a loan document will be called a get. It's not uncommon. Also, there's a document called a get shikhar. We'll get to that in Kedushin as well. You know, once the, in the beginning of Kedushin, the Gemara says three ways to acquire a woman, two ways for a woman to acquire herself. There's also there's also a according to according to Torah law, slavery is permis, is permitted. A slave could be acquired in, in, in some ways, and he also can acquire himself in one of those ways if he gets a document called a shikhur, a document that frees him. And that document is often called get shikhur, a document, a, a get, a divorce of shikhur freedom. And the discussion of get shechor happens. There's quite a lot of discussion of get shechor in Sechlis Gitin as well. Okay. In order to obviously get a, a, a in general, divorce is, is an unfortunate event. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll learn about it later in the Sechta, but someone who gets divorced, the Talmud says that even the Mizbeach, the altar cries, what exactly that means. We'll have to discuss when we get, when we get up to it. Um, Obviously, a get is not a preferred pathway. It doesn't mean that it isn't sometimes necessary, and that's why we have a whole process called gitten. And of course, whatever we're learning in the Masechta doesn't necessarily mitigate the tragedy of a get. This Masechta is a lot of discussion of how to create a get. Not doesn't in a few places we'll, we'll talk about the tragedy of a get, but of a divorce. But that tragedy is by and large not the discussion of the Masechta. In general, by the way, Talmud typically relates to the law. If you're looking for the more spiritual component, you'll probably find it in Medrash or in Zahar, other, other, other works written, <clears throat> written in the same era. Tal Talmud typically focuses on Halacha. And, that, and that's, just, that's not, not any different with, with regard to Masechta Skitin. Okay. Um, what in order to divorce your wife, what do you need to do? We'll learn about what what is why would some why what is the minimum requirement for somebody to divorce his wife? But we'll we'll see. It's basically nothing. If a man doesn't like it, finds a nicer wife, that is sufficient grounds to give a divorce. You know, we'll, we'll discuss it. It's actually machlekes, and we'll discuss it later. Okay. Also remember, like we pointed out, 
according to Torah law, one is allowed to uh, one is allowed to own slaves. One is also a man is allowed to marry multiple women. Those women, those women are called sorrows to each other. We'll discuss that a little bit. Okay, a, a divorce has to be given with volition. The, the husband has to agree to give the divorce. <clears throat> if a if he is forced to give a divorce, the divorce is technically speaking not valid. However, in limited situations, you could force a divorce, and that's because if the court if the court forces a divorce, we consider the divorce to be given of its own volition. And that's because as follows. The idea is that sort of every Jew wants to do what's right, right? So for example, we learn in, in Vayikra, if a person, if a person separates a sacrifice, he has to willingly bring it. Let's say a person refuses. We take a stick and we beat him up until he willingly wants to. It sounds like communism. It's, it's not, and it is. In a certain sense, it's, it's not, not very different than the, you know, the KGB telling people what to do and them, quote, unquote, will, willing to do it, you know? But I think Kim Jong Un gets gets elected by like ninety nine percent every single year. You have the option of voting for him; you just have to request the ballot in a different room. <laughs> um, but but this and the idea here. What, what's the idea? The idea is sort of that every Jew wants to do what God says. What God says, and therefore, if a a rabbinical court declares him in violation and and declares to force him, and they actually go ahead and force him, he's doing what he really wants to do. However, if, a, if, if it's not done under the auspices of rabbinic court, then we don't presume that that is true. And therefore, it is not valid. So if a non-Jewish court or uh, sort of a, um, I don't know if anyone remembers the, uh, this happened probably about 10 years ago now, uh, when there was a fellow arrested for beating up men who didn't, uh, who didn't want to divorce their wives, that this is also questionable. If it's not done under the auspices of court, it's not clear that the divorce would be valid. Okay. Um, you look at a divorce, divorce obviously has two different uh, own side. Another, another point also, a woman does not need to consent to divorce. It's not up to her. If she gets a divorce, then uh, she she's divorced, whether she likes it or not. In some cases, it doesn't make difference even if she didn't know about it. So let's say a guy, we'll learn about it. A guy, uh, a guy gives his wife a, 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 an envelope and he says it's a bag of cash. It's a divorce. She's divorced. Now, according to Rabbi Gershom, enacted a few different a few different rules. This is way back. This is about you know well over a thousand years ago. I think it was a thousand years ago. This is like a thousand fifty years ago, something like that. He enacted a few different decrees. Ashkenaz Jews have unilaterally accepted it. The vast majority of Sephardi Jews have also, but not exclusively. You can't. You know, there are certain groups of Sephardi where it is unfair to hold them to Rabbi Gershom. They're not responsible to listen to Rabbi Gershom. Okay, Rabbi Gershom is in the earliest Rishonim. Um, Rabbi Enu Gershom decreed that a man cannot divorce his wife unless she consents. And, uh, and a man cannot marry more than two women unless, a man cannot marry more than one, more than one wife. But two, a few other things, yeah, exactly what it was, but so practically today, a person does have to obtain his wife his wife's consent to be able to give a divorce. Now it's there, a thousand years later, so is it so there's there is there is there is, there is talk about a thousand years, maybe it's a thousand years later. It's by and large, it, it, Ashkenazi Jews are certainly going to treat it the same. Maybe certain groups of of, of Sephardi Jews are not. So it's, it's more a question. Um, regardless, another point here to bring up. Oh, 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 there's a number of interesting stories throughout the years of of of. Uh, Typically, they have the ones that we know about are famous people, of people whose wives not want to take divorces, and there is sort of a halachic workaround called a heter meir rabbanim, which is where a hundred rabbis permit him to give a, to give a divorce, uh, to, to 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 allow him to force a divorce. And uh, there's a few few notable scholars, including someone who's alive today, uh, that have, that have gone through this process and throughout the generations. There have been, it's a, yeah. Of those that passed away, there's a famous one called Sadiq Akayan of Lublin. Uh, he was a, it was about 130 years ago. He, um, he was, a, when he was younger, he was a little bit of a hothead and an extremist. And he decided that his, he was obligated to divorce his wife. And it, w it wasn't the case. He wasn't even obligated. What happened was that people knew that he was an extremist and they wanted to get him. So they arranged, they arranged for, for it to look like somebody was dating his wife. The whole thing was a farce. He was tricked into it. And then he ended up divorcing her, but he couldn't, he, she refused to take a divorce. 
So, uh, so he had to, he ran around Europe getting a hundred signatures for his Heter to divorce her by force. Anyway, in the course of that, he ended up actually becoming Chassidish because he had to go to a bunch of Chassidish Rabbanim. A lot of the wouldn't listen to him. Um, ultimately, he did not have children and, and he later regretted uh, divorcing his <laughs> wife. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, again, the, the document itself, we'll learn about this extensively. Got, the document has two parts. It's called a typhus and a tariff. So this is sort of, you think of it, of it like this, a, you know, let's say you, you, you go online, you're, you're renting an apartment, right? So they have these websites, they give you a, 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 a blank rental contract. What's missing from the rental contract? The name and the date. There we are, the name and the date and the rent. And some of the, some of the specific details are missing. It's a blank document that has blank lines in it. It has the core contract is there and you just fill in the blanks. And it, so, so that's sort of how it works with a get. There's one, one feature we'll explain in a moment, but basically a, a, a get is a typhus that is an outline document with a tariff, which is the specifics. Tariff includes all the specifics, and the addition is the words. One of the key components of the get is the words harayat mutaras l'cholodim. Not one; it's probably the the most important component of the get of the document that you are permitted to marry whoever you wish to marry. And that that part is part. It's called part of the tariff. So the doc, the, the details of the document, the outline, that, that sort of standard document. But then when you fill in the names and you fill in the words, you are permitted to marry everyone, whoever you want. That is part of the tariff, the specifics. All right, we'll see a, 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 a sofa is allowed to stock a typhus. So he's allowed to keep uh, piles of typhus in the round. These are blank documents, right? They're sort of the outline without the, the specifics. And then when a divorce comes, he puts in the name, he puts in Harei Mataris Chalodam, he puts in the, the date, the city, Practically speaking, I think today it's not done. And the reason for that is, the reason for that, we'll get to, to understand it, we'll get to, we'll get to it about Vassar, but there's a lot of other technical problems in, in the document that make using blank lines very difficult. And you often don't have enough space. For example, you typically write any name that the person has been, has been using. So not, not uncommon for a person to have, you know, two, three, four names. So you'll have an English name and a Hebrew name, and you'll have some names that people call him. Usually there are you know, two, three groups of people that call him a slightly different variation of his own name. You know? <clears throat> so all those will be in the divorce. So you'll have a whole list. And her, her name is Rachel, and some people call her Rachel, and some people call her uh, Ra Rochelle, and some people call her uh, Rachel, uh, you know, Rochel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of those will be listed. You know, Typically, the name of the location is written based on the river that's nearby, and that could sometimes be a little complicated depending on how they spell the river and how big the how how many letter how many spaces. You don't want blank lines in a document because that makes it easy to forge. A document that could be forged will soon see is problematic. So now, technically, you can white out the lines. You can, and if you look at Xuba, this is what's done in Xuba. Xuba people do, the, 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 you know, you go to a Judaica store, they stock Xubas. And then it comes to a marriage ceremony, and the rabbi fills in the blanks. And there are big blank lines, and you have to like check. You have to line out the rest of the blank line until the margin of the document. So that's my my experience, and it's the most most anyone who's used a stock suba. They had a custom suba, so then it's written the way. There, it's there kind of people get custom ones. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. We have a new one, which is stock. Well, with with and they lined Israel, yeah, and they yeah. lined out to the end. Of, to Tel Aviv, yeah, so the, yeah, yeah. I'm saying, but the, the end of the line, they they lined out like check. Just yeah, they're just yeah, just exactly. for, for. Okay, um, the cut the custom is that the 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 the, the, the uh, divorce is written out in Sava Shuris. It's written by a cipher. It doesn't have to be. You can write it in, in any recognizable language, and you can write it on anything. As long as it cannot be forged, and it will, it's something that will last a reasonable amount of time. Write it on a, you know, this is wood, you know, this is wood invitations. You could like do it on a piece of wood if you want. That's fine too. She's okay. The, yeah, yeah, we done too. Okay, very important. <laughs> very important. The typhus of the document, which you said is the details plus the words Haram Mataras Chaladim. We'll learn about it more in the Masechta. The typhus needs to be written Lashma. That means it has to be written with the intention that this woman is being divorced by this man. And that, that feature is very prominently right in the beginning of the Masech that will go right into Lishma. 
What does it mean that the get has to be written Lishma? The husband has to divorce his wife. There's a process of delivery. It has to pass from his domain into her domain. She does not have to know that it's in, in, in her domain. He said he can give her an envelope and say it's $100 and it's, it's actually divorced. Not only that, she could be sleeping and he could tuck it underneath her and she's divorced. You know, if he's if uh, the house is locked, he can put it into the mailbox as long as she knows that it, as long as she knows that she got mail, that that, that that's enough because it enters her domain. It's her house. Um, obviously, in such a situation, if it's not her house, then that wouldn't work. But if it is her house, he can just insert it into the mailbox as long as she knows it's in the mailbox. It's a chutz her mishlameras. She knows that that she's been watching what's coming into the mailbox. Then uh, you know the mailbox. You talking about the door, the you know the hole in the door, not the, uh, the box outside is not a chutz. That would not work because someone can easily remove it from the box. You know the Porsche pirates. So that wouldn't that wouldn't count. Okay. Another interesting discussion, which plays out quite prominently a number of times in the Sechda, is Eidim Sira Karthi or Eidim Chasim Karthi. Machlegas Tinir Velozer and Rebeir. Basically, that means as follows. This is sort of a very fundamental question. It's like, what's the main part of the document? Is it writing the document or is it giving the document? Mm -hmm. So let's go with the, the, I think the more logical way to understand is it's actually giving the document. In that case, the document doesn't even have to have witnesses. You just fill out the details. You don't have to have anyone sign the document. You hand the document in front of witnesses. That is considered that is that you've effectuated, you've executed the divorce. Now you should sign the document because it's useful, right? Because ten years later, the husband's gonna say you're not divorced, and all your kids are mamzerim, and she'll say, "Well, here's a document." Now, if the document is signed by witnesses, it's much harder for him to make the claim. <clears throat> That's the opinion of Rabbi Lazar of Ede Chasimah Karatim. I'm sorry, Ede Mitzir Karatim. The opinion of Rabbi Meir is that actually the, the effectuation of the document happens when the document is written. So you need witnesses to actually sign the document. Now, and the, the document only, it, it, the event occurs. So in other words, the force of the document, the force <laughs> of the get is the document itself. And that's why it needs witnesses. Now it happens to be because handing over the, the get is when the event takes place. And we have a general rule that any time we're dealing with the Dover Shev Arafa, a matter of you know of, of relationships or anything, anything of anything that impacts others with in, that, that has a sexual nature to it, we require two witnesses. We don't have to, in 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 Saita, Saita was an exception, right? We saw an exception, one witness is believed, but typically you always need two witnesses. So therefore, according to the mayor, you also have to have two witnesses witness the transaction. That would be called Ede Chasima. The witnesses of the signatures, they're the ones that create the divorce. Okay. Okay. And now, um, finally, the, the idea is that a divorce could be, there could be connection, there could be um, conditions that are attached to a divorce. And we'll get to it later in the Masech, the Gemara deals with this extensively. Um, what type of conditions are allowed, what type of conditions are not allowed, uh, but, but, but it is possible to connect a divorce to a condition. Okay, that's basically it. Okay, let's begin the Masechta. <laughs> okay, interesting. Gittin begins with a very interesting, sort of a, what, what seems to be quite a side note to the discussion. <clears throat> Although Toysis notes that ideally a get should have 12 lines. That's because the word get, gimel tes, has a numerical value of 12. It's also because if you count the spaces there are between the um, between the books of Torah, there's four lines between Horatius and Shemais. Between Shemais and Vayikra, is, that's eight lines. Between Vayikra and Bamidbar is 12 lines. And the, the difference between Bamidbar and Dvar and Taisis doesn't feel as important to count because that is sort of a repetition. So we find that the number twelve is the number twelve is the, is the is the force that separates the Torah into three different books. Okay. Anyway, how maybe get me Medina Sayam? Somebody who brings a divorce from Medina Sayam. This is this is anywhere outside of Israel. Sarah Shiyomar, he's required to say I've seen the document written and signed. Why why is this necessary? We'll get to it. We'll get to it in a moment. The Gemara has two opinions. <clears throat> uh, 
one opinion is because the document has to be written lishmo. That means it has to be written for the purposes of a specific woman being divorced. And outside of Israel, they were not familiar with this process. So when somebody brings a get outside of Israel, he needs to say, and then they would ask him, they would say, you saw, oh, you saw, the, you saw them writing it, was it written lishmo? Was it... According to the other opinion, the idea is as follows. Uh, should, should probably just spoke about this in introduction. Kiyom uh, Staris, we had a little, came up a little bit in the beginning of Subas. Kiyom Staris is the idea that, biblically speaking, if somebody brings a signed document, we believe what's in the document. We do not suspect forgery. Why don't we suspect forgery? Because it takes a tremendous, you know, only only like wicked people forge. The vast majority of documents, people don't attempt forgery. Because it takes a tremendous amount of, of chutzpah to be able to, to make such an attempt. And presumably, the vast majority of people do not attempt forgery, and therefore we don't presume forge. However, the rabbis, to disincentivize the enterprise, they required what's called kiyom shtaris, which is sort of a notary. Your, your, your documents have to be notarized. How do you notarize a document? It's fairly simple. It, it's sort of the idea of, of using a centralized authority. So what you do is you immediately take, as soon as you get the document, you immediately take two people that recognize the signatures. You go to Besden and you say, can you validate the, Can you validate that these signatures belong to the people that actually sign them? And they, they look at the signatures and say, yeah, it's the same signature. So the court, now remember, there's a lot of people, but there are only a few courts. So the court now takes goes on top of that and they write at the end of the document, we, we the assembled, validated this document, signed the courts. Now, the court, to validate a court scheme is very easy. How many courts are there in the world? Rabbinical courts. I don't know, a couple of handfuls, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's just 60. How many people, how many Jews are there? It's like, I don't know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, I don't know, whatever it is. <clears throat> so to, to verify, so even if you take a document with you from New York to Australia, it's very easy to verify a key of it. It's much more difficult to ver verify the original signatures. So by doing kiyom, you sort of have an easier process to, to make your document usable in any place in the world. Similarly, if a woman has a divorce and the, and the witnesses live in a different, they, they live in, in a different state or a different country, they live in England. So, you know, I presume that if we had to verify documents from, that was written by people in England, it wouldn't be so easy. I mean, this is with telephones and with fax machines and, and emails, et cetera. <clears throat> certainly without that it's much more difficult it could take years to verify such a thing so the solution is that whoever is bringing the divorce they say I saw the document written and signed and that sort of effectuates a kiyom typically kiyom needs two witnesses and we'll discuss that so and the idea is once he brings it to the court he says the court will write their, their own validation which is much easier to verify Okay. So the first opinion is this has to be done anywhere outside of Israel. Rev. Gamliel Aymerin Gamliel says, Even someone who brings a divorce to an area right outside of Israel. Farludim and Lud were two border towns that were right next to each other. They would often engage in commerce with each other. One of them was in Israel, one of them was right outside Israel. They are also required to say, I've witnessed the writing and the signing of the document. The rabbis taught, It's not necessary except for Elah Medina Sayam. Somebody who brings a get outside of Israel, which is like the first opinion. The Gemara will ask, what's the difference in the first and second opinion? Someone who, someone who, somebody who brings a divorce uh, from uh, from Israel to outside of Israel, or within two within two countries outside of Israel. So somebody who brings from 
from outside of Israel to Israel, Israel to outside of Israel, were outside of Israel, one city to another, one country to another. Okay. Hagmunya is probably, uh, there, there is, these, it's like West Berlin and East Berlin when the, when the Berlin Wall was built. They're, they're the same city, but there is, there is a wall that separates the two of them. If Yudaimer, if Yudaimer says, if you try to parse out the boundaries, what's called Israel, may Rekem Lemizrach, Rekem Kemizrach. From the city of Re Rekem, including that city itself, eastwards, may Ashkelon Ladorum, from the city of Ashkelon and including the territory of Ashkelon itself, southward, may Akko Lutzafen, from Akko northwards, Akko Kitzafen, including the city of Akko itself, all of that is outside of Israel. Remeir, 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 Remeir says no. Ako ke Eretz Yisrael legitim. Ako is like Eretz Yisrael with regard to divorce. But how may we get Eretz Yisrael? Somebody who brings a divorce inside of Israel, let's say from Jerusalem to Tiberias. Ain it sar shiyem fanenechtam? He does not need to say the fanenechtam fanenechtam. Bem yeshal of Aaron. However, if there is if there is a claim that the document is forged, you can verify the documents. Okay. My time. What is the necessity of saying this, making the statement of fun and echta of fun and What's the reason for it? What, why is this necessary? Rabba Amar, Rabba says, on top of Beis and Beis, to be, the Fishain Bikian at Lashma, because outside of Israel, they're not they are not experts with writing the document Lashma, which means which means with the intention the document is written for this man divorcing this woman. We'll soon see it's possible you have two, you have two people with the same name, same father's name, with, with their wives in the same name. You know, they can technically use each other's documents. They can't because it's not written Lashma. Document would not be valid. It has to be written for the purposes of this specific divorce in question. Rova Amar, Rova says, We have this concept called Kiyom Stories, where the document needs to be verified. And uh, if you're traveling over a distance, you're not going to be able to verify, you'll have difficulty verifying the document because the witnesses live in a foreign country and not everybody knows all the witnesses. So therefore, you need to verify it by saying, my bidayu. What's the difference between their opinion? It can be an ayu, there are a few of the following differences. The first difference, we'll go with Rashi, we'll go with Rashi's explanation here first. The Asiwa Betray. We're uh, one second. Two witnesses carry the document. Now, if two witnesses are carrying the document. We still need to know whether the document was written for the for the purposes of this specific divorce. However, we are not concerned about Kim Shtaris verifying the document. Why? Because the two witnesses that carry the document presumably are hanging around now. So they'll they'll be able to verify the document in the future. So it's not necessary to verify it immediately. That's Rashi's explanation. Tyson says a different shot. Here, a second. Okay. Uh, um, Inami, Medina, the Medina Barrett Israel. Another difference would be from two different locations inside of Israel. One second. Okay. Now, the Gemara's presumption here is, let's say, for example, this would be something like Jerusalem and Tiberias. So Jerusalem is in the center of the country. Tiberias is in the north. And if somebody sends a, a divorce from, from Jerusalem to Tiberias, presumably the Gemara, is, the Gemara is saying that there is 
there aren't frequent travelers between the two cities. And therefore, we're concerned that the document may not be able to be verified. However, we're not concerned that the document wasn't written in Lashma. We presume it was written in Lashma because it was written in Israel. One second. Inami, Medina, Medina, Barrett, Israel. Inami. One second. Um, if a divorce is sent, you know, across town, outside of Israel, if the reason is Lashma, we still have to verify it. The reason is because of the verification of documents, Kim Shtaris, it's not necessary because uh, we know who the, we, we, we know the people involved, we know the names, they live in the city. So it would not be necessary. Okay. <clears throat> so now the Gemara has, has, the Gemara goes, tries to, it's the next, uh, next, uh, you know, half a week, week or so, half a week. Uh, we'll be going through different proofs to different, different sides of this debate. Again, the debate is whether or not the document has to be written lishma. What, what, what's the reason of the fun and of the fun Is it because the document has to be written lishma, or is it because the document has to be available to be verified? So the Gemara says, According to Rabbi's opinion, if the document needs to be written lishma for the purposes of this divorce. You should require two witnesses. Just like any any type of testimony that pertains to a matter of you know of, of relationships or se sexual nature requires two witnesses. This should require two witnesses as well. Sigmar so responds, Eidechanabisurn. This a single witness is believed. Just like a single witness is believed to tell you, let's say, a piece of meat is kosher. So a, a, a single witness is believed to say this document is a kosher document. Gemara says, hold on a second. Amor da Amrin and Eidechad nam bisur. And when do we say Eidechad is believed? You go in chaticha suffix shal chelav suffix shal shuman le ischazik isura. That's only when there is no ischazik isura. So what does this mean? Ischazik isura is the idea that there is there is a prohibition that's that's. Let's go backwards here a little bit. We spoke about the concept of chazaka in the past. What's the chazaka? Chazaka is a presumptu presumptive state. Okay, so for example, we'll, we'll start with a, we'll actually start with a question. This girl. we'll start with Rashi. What's the presumptive state of a live animal? Is it permitted to eat or is it prohibited to eat? Permitted. What? Well, a live animal, a live ox. We we know there was a live ox now. We know there was a live ox, and then at some later point, we see the ox butchered up. Is that permitted or not permitted? It's not permitted because a live ox is a prohibited food. Now, there is a way to permit it by slaughtering it and, and salting it correctly. You don't have to salt it if you broil it. Okay, whatever it is, you have to, you have to slaughter it and process it correctly. So, so, but we have to know that that event happens. So the animal is established prohibition unless we know that it, that it became permitted. Now, in this case, actually, a single witness is believed. Why is that? Because if he wanted to, he could slaughter it. It's biyada. In other words, he has the ability to to accomplish what he's trying to say. So you have an you, you know the animal was the animal's in the pen. You come back the next day and it's butchered up and it's in bags and it's frozen in the freezer. Okay, and guy says, "Oh, I, it's fine. There was a, there was a shaykh here yesterday. He he took care of it. Don't worry about it." He's believed to say that because if he wanted to, he could have done the same thing. There's nothing stopping him from taking the animal, slaughtering it, butchering it, and putting it into the freezer. He's able to do that. So therefore, he's believed, even though the, the presumptive nature is prohibition. The presumptive nature of a married woman is that she's prohibited to remarry. She, she is in a state of, of prohibition. She's only permitted to her husband. Now somebody's trying to say that, no, she, she's permitted to, to marry whoever she wants because this document is a valid document because it was written for her. It doesn't work that way. This random stranger could not have divorced her if he wanted to. And if he gave her a divorce document, obviously it wouldn't make a difference. It's a joke. There's no, no way you can divorce somebody else's wife. So there's no biyada, and you have a schaz you have an established prohibition. Now, let's say you have a, let's say a piece of meat. You know, somebody, uh, somebody comes over to you with a piece of meat, says this is a kosher meat. 
you have no clue where that meat came from. Could have come from anywhere, right? You don't, you don't know that it's prohibited. You have no reason to presume it's prohibited. It's not, you don't know the animal it came from. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we say that this meat is a suffix, it's a doubt. There's no presumptive nature, you just don't know. And a single witness says, it's kosher, it's kosher. Okay. But, but that, in that case, there's no presumptive nature. Here, there's presumptive prohibition, and it's not the other. The witness does not have the ability to rectify the situation by slaughtering the, slaughtering the cow because he can't divorce somebody else's wife. So the Gemara asks, mm-hmm. If you have a cut of meat, so in this case, the Gemara's example is shuman. there are forbidden fats. Uh, if you take a, 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 a ox, a cattle, Mo, the vast majority of the cattle is not eaten. Uh, I shouldn't say vast majority. Just over majority is eaten. It's probably about 60% that's eaten. The back of the animal is customarily sold to an anjou. Mm-hmm. Sephardim eat a lot more. Sephardim will do a process called nicker, or in, in Yiddish, they, they call it trabering. You've heard of that word. Trabering. They would traber an animal. They'll, they'll do nicker. They'll pull out the forbidden areas, and they have more meat. Pulling out forbidden areas necessarily involves destroying meat. That's because you cut it at weird angles, it becomes unusable. So it's not like you, you still don't get as much meat as an Andrews get out of a cow. And that, that's and so besides for the prohibited fats, is also the way you have to cut it, which also ruins a lot of meat. So you get more, but not everything. Okay. So you have a chaticha, you're not sure if it's forbidden meat or it's permitted meat. It's a kosher animal, it's slaughtered correctly, but parts of the animal are forbidden. The law is chazgisura. There's no chazgisura. Abu Hakad is chazgisura. Over here, there's a stat. There's presumpt. Her presumptive nature is prohibited to other men. The eshes ish have a davar shabarav. Ain davar shabarav. Pachas mishnayim. She's in a prohibited state. Presumptive prohibition. So therefore, we should presume that 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 state has remained, and therefore she remains prohibited. So Gemara says, "Rave the kinen." Most people are experts. In other words, the, the majority, the majority is the majority of divorces are written lishma for the specific man and woman, who, who specific man and woman in question. Even though a mayor is, is always concerned with the minority, this is different because who's writing divorces? Typically, it's seifrim, right? These are scribes. Stam sifri didai migvagmiri. The, by scribes, it's an overwhelming majority that know the laws of how to write a divorce, and they know that it has to be written for the specific marriage. And therefore, the entire nature of the, the fact that we that Lashma is a concern, i.e., that we're concerned the document might not be written Lashma, is entirely of rabbinic nature. And therefore, sort of to make things manageable, the rabbi says, okay, we'll rely on a single witness. Okay. Now, this discussion we'll review tomorrow, and it will take us through, like I said, a half a week to a week. We'll go back and forth weighing these different uh, different, different priority, different, these two different opinions, and, and see if we could prove in either direction. So we'll begin tomorrow with the review. Okay. Sure, I have a great morning.